Hi, I'm Georgie and this is my mum, Sarah. We're two multi-creatives based in rural Victoria, Australia. We have an atelier ceramic studio, Hope & Co, in a mid-century renovated garage. We make, paint, write and capture. And now we're taking you on our creative trails. Hi everyone, <laughs> welcome back to our YouTube channel. We've had a really exciting week here at the studio. Colin, the Kona Kiln from Canada, has finally arrived after 10 months. It's Colin! <laughs> Colin! <laughs> We're very excited and can't wait to bring you all sorts of new wares coming out of this kiln. And it's it, it, it's exciting because I've only ever had secondhand kilns and this is the first new one I've ever owned. So we're really excited and what else? We've also had some exciting little renovations going on. We now have a new ruby trough that's been put in today actually as we're filming this video. But by the time you see this, it'll be all done. Um, and we've been shuffling around the whole building and working out where we want to put things so you'll probably see in some of the b-roll footage that everything's moved around a little bit since you last saw the studio so we're moving and shaking at the moment and we're just trying to be desperately organized <laughs> yeah. but no we are really enjoying what we're doing at the moment and we're loving bringing these videos to you so Without further ado, today we're actually going to take you on a mini excursion into our local town. And where are we going? We are going op shop uh, hunting. And I don't know that op shops is something that you might understand overseas, but it's a charity shop where you've got a whole lot of different furniture bits and pieces, like, crockery. I think it's um, called Goodwill or like or, yeah, stuff or, in or junk shops, whatever yeah. you want to call them. Some people will call it boarding, we prefer to call it collecting. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, we'll see you soon. Georgie and I took a little trip down to our local op shop store and we love it because we get lots of inspiration there for our new ceramics. Now we draw inspiration from the 70s, 80s, 90s, earlier, whatever's there and some of it could be considered ugly. But what we like to do is turn it into something beautiful. So I'm just going to show you what we've got from today. This is the box. Um, we have a rack, a nice rack here to be able to put some glazed plates on. This is one of the ones that I really love. Uh, this is going to make a fantastic uh, lamp base, I think, or a vessel on its own. I might take the neck out. I, I really love the round shape of it. It's like a big fat belly. Um, and yeah, so that one's a really good one, $10. Some of you might know and follow us on Instagram and we have a petal bowl that we make and so I'm also trying to find other pieces that have a petal shape. Now this plate is an old English plate, obviously quite old this one. We'll make a mould from that. And this is the one I'm going to show you what I will do something with today. Again, I'm not looking for the plate. I actually think that's a really dreadful plate. But I want the shape. So I will show you a little bit later on how we turn this 
into something a little bit prettier. I often look for multiples. So there are four bowls here, plastic bowls, 50 cents each. These bowls will be fantastic because I'll make some plaster molds out of these and all of a sudden we've got four to work with. You need multiples as we're discovering for wholesale. This one, very clumsily decorated, but uh, it's a lovely shape and I think we can utilize that one. A little bowl with pretty ugly colors on it. Well, I think they are, um, but this one I actually saw and thought this would make a fabulous cup with a really beautiful handle on here. So I might make a mold of this and then create a handle that we can attach in another mold and we'll be able to produce multiples of a really lovely broad teacup. Who doesn't love a beautiful teacup? Next one is a piece of Pyrex from New York. Uh, you find all this. I just love the, the vertical shape. I'm always looking for shapes. So I love the way that this bowl tapers and it's a little bit conical, but it, it is a really lovely shape. This big bowl, it's made in Brazil. Things from all over the place. The reason why I chose this one is be again, because of the straight line of the bowl, this is actually easier for me to paint on with underglaze. So I quite like finding things like this. I'll be able to apply all sorts of patterns to a shape like this. Bon appetit. Now this bowl is $4. The reason why I bought this one is I'm going to make a set of pasta bowls for myself and I'm going to see how they, they turn out. I love this because it's broad but it's not too big and great for a bowl of pasta. What do you think? <laughs> and finally, we've got ourselves a whole lot of these wooden bowls. The old barbecue bowls. They're pretty ordinary really but Turned upside down, they'll make fantastic hump moulds with chucks on top uh, to stop clay sticking to it. Or I'm going to make plaster moulds on the interior of these and use them as hump moulds later on, which will probably be the best option for them. And I have three of these uh, to perhaps put my bowls on that Georgie discovered lurking at the bottom of a shelf in the op shop. Okay, so the one thing that I've said is to look for shape. Uh, don't look at the aesthetics, don't look at the ugly stuff on the outside. Look for shapes that appeal to you. So, on another day, Georgie and I have discovered some really lovely oval platters. One's plastic, and Georgie bought this at an op shop a couple of months ago, and we've made a platter here out of it. Now, once it's fired, it's going to be a little bit smaller, but it was formed by putting some chucks on the back of the, the mould and setting our clay on that. And there you have suddenly a really lovely oval platter by using this as your inspiration. Now, if you don't find anything at the op shop, go to a $2 shop and they have picnic platters out of plastic everywhere. So this was $2.95 and again we've got some chucks on the back. We've formed a foot out of the existing foot when the clay was damp and I've cut it along the edge and clearly it does fire a bit smaller so if you're looking for a certain size make sure you take that into consideration. I love a little bit of texture on the rim and these two I've made this one up a number of times and called it our filigree dish, but this one I haven't made yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Now this old dish is a really pretty dish when it's made into a ceramic form. Again, I'll show you how to cut that one out and make your own.
rolled our slab of clay, you can do this either with a slab roller or in our last video I showed you how to do that with two guide sticks and a rolling pin. So we have a slab prepared here and we have our two items that we want to make new pieces of pottery out of. As I mentioned before, I'm really not after the holes in the middle, um, the carved pottery, I'm after the edge. So I'm going to place that down. So with a needle tool, I will be tracing around the edge of each of these shapes. really soft so we're going to let it set up for a little bit and then we'll come back to it and show you how we attach it to the back of these and use these items as a mold. Now I'm a little bit worried about this one because it has a really deep foot so instead of using this plate as the mold I'm going to use something else as a hump mold so I'll show you that. Okay so the clay is as I said is really really soft so to set it up a little bit more quickly I'm popping our little slabs on cement sheets so it'll draw a little bit of the moisture out. I've also decided, just a change of mind, I wanted a little bit more of the impression of the pattern. So, have I got clay on my face? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> we can leave that in. Where? Where? On your forehead. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I've also decided that on second thoughts, I wanted a little bit more of the impression of the pattern of this dish on the clay. So I've put it back on and I've pressed it around the edges like so. And as such, it's squeezed out a little bit more clay. So I'm just going to tidy that up around the edge. Now we have a beautiful little imprint uh, of that original a silver dish on the clay, which we want to try and preserve. Hello everybody, it's the next day and we're about to take our pieces that we made last night uh, out off the mould, so here we go. You'll need a board to do this and it's really important so that we don't break the clay. It's in leather hard state. Ta now of course we'll tidy these edges up a bit. I want to make sure that these shapes are a little bit more consistent with some of the others around here, but that's good. I am running out of uh, boards, so I'm using a breadboard, but the same applies. Flip it over. Remove our dish. And ta-da! I'm really happy with that one. Again, I will clean it up and I will sponge it and, and we'll tidy everything up and it'll look great. 
So we will be able to, I have never done this one before, so if you want to see how this one turns out, you'll have to perhaps follow us on Instagram and we'll put up a finished product. So after tidying up, this will dry and it will be bone dry. We will pop it in for a bisque firing and then bring it out and we'll do a plain glaze. I'm not quite sure what color it will be, but we do have a couple of finished dishes to show you at the end of this video. So you'll see what this shape dish looks like. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know down in the comments below, hit that like button, subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you are first in the know when we upload a new episode. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye.